Hey, how you doing? Millsurf Garage here. Just wanted to uh, actually push a video up to the forefront here. I got a couple of rifles backed up that still doing some work to and uh, want to be perfect before I uh, do a video on them here. As a matter of fact, the things that are wrong are like so small and minute or mechanical that you wouldn't even notice it in me just doing a video and showing it to you. But just in my head, um, I only feel comfortable doing a video on a rifle when I know the rifle is set, you know, as, as close to 100% as I'm going to be able to make it. But today, I just wanted to uh, push forward with a uh, video on uh, an SKS. I um, decided to uh, pick one of these up from Widener's. Um, I think they're sold out now, but um, they had these um, they had these available for a pretty cheap price, uh, just a little bit over three hundred, um, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to maybe around about you know about three and a half. And uh, there's people that they were talking a lot of junk about them, saying that uh, you know they're not a true model fifty nine. They're a fifty nine sixty six that had the grenade launcher uh, stuff removed from it and. They're just kind of pieced together, and even Wideners themselves, they had some kind of story up on the uh, original posting about uh, something about them being a surplus for the Bosnian War that were all crated up and refurbed, but then never used, and then they took that down, so people were saying, like, what, did they just make that up? Was it true? Or And uh, you know what? It was like this whole gossipy thing in the SKS community. Um, you know, I started to get into wanting to have one of these then of course you find yourself just bouncing around like the SKS boards you know there's always message boards for every different particular type of gun and uh, this way you know you you learn about um, the different variants and uh, you know um, and, and things to look out for before you actually purchase and uh, I had read that people were saying that these things were questionable and and that they were just, uh, you know, like parts, guns thrown together, non-original, no collector's value. And I'm like, you know, the way I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know, I could probably track down a Russian one. And and uh, here where I live, they're they're closing in on a thousand dollars now, man. You see them in gun stores for seven change, eight and change now, whatever. It's only a matter of time before these things start commanding four-figure values. Uh, the, the the nice Russian ones, I mean, you know, and uh, and even the Chinese ones and the Yugo ones, you know, they. They close in as, you know, close behind in price. It's not like they're uh, they're cheap. Not as cheap as Widener's had them. That's for sure. Half the price Widener's had them for than what I see them for retail where I live. So uh, the way I looked at it, I don't really know much about an SKS. It's kind of new for me as far as Millsurps go. You know, I'm more into the uh, World War One, World War Two kind of stuff. This, for me, was reaching out. I didn't have... Uh, anything that used the uh, 762 by 39 cartridge so uh moving into like a mid-size cartridge for me was even like a big step had to think about you know do i really want to stock another round and and you know it's a, it's a round that's certainly going to be available for a long time and uh and it's not really that crazy expensive the availability is there uh you can get the, you can get the round cheap you know what i mean you could buy non you know nice non-corrosive stuff um steel cased but uh at least it's non-corrosive so uh, I decided to do it, and um, I was really surprised with, uh, you know, how nice it is. It's, uh, it's actually pretty decent. It, um, it still has the uh, knob here, this adjuster uh, for the uh, gas block here to uh, make it semi-automatic or, uh, you know, or, uh, or, or single shot uh, because of the great grenade launcher attachment that was originally on there. But... Um, I think that's kind of cool, actually, that um, if you really don't want, if you really wanted to just uh, fire, uh, you know, one round at a time, because I'm kind of used to that even with some of my uh, uh, older mill serps, that um, you can uh, just flick this over, shut off the gas block so you really don't get any junk in there. It doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get dirty. You kind of seal it off so this whole area stays clean. And uh, just cycle the action uh, manually and, and load uh, one round at a time if you're, uh, you know, just doing some plinking or, or uh, just uh, target shooting for accuracy and you really just wanted to shoot one round, look through your glass, see where that hit, shoot another round, look through your glass, see where that hit. I'm kind of used to that just because of the older rifles I have. So it actually is kind of cool that I have that option to be able to uh, switch it from semi-automatic to uh, single shot, you know. And uh, the wood on it is nice. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I don't really have another one to compare it to. 
But um, the way I looked at it, if I did enjoy it and I did like it, it really wasn't that much money to make the jump that if I really did enjoy it, I could then feel more comfortable seeking out a, a higher quality or more collectible Russian one and paying more because um, I had already tested one out and felt it out and thought that, you know, it was for me. If I bought a thousand rounds of ammo and uh, and bought this and, you know, went through the thousand rounds and after that thousand rounds was like, ah, you know, SKSs are nice, but uh, not really my thing. I could easily sell this locally to any of these gun shops for what I paid for it and, uh, and be out of that thousand rounds of ammo and never look back and say, uh, you know, it was a fun experience. But, um, and, uh, you know, only the future will tell if that is what I do. But um, I enjoy this. I like it. Haven't shot it yet. But, I mean, I just enjoyed taking it apart, looking at it. It's interesting. To me, it was interesting. And uh, it's kind of nice to have a, uh, you know, to have a uh, semi-automatic um, a semi-automatic rifle that doesn't, uh, you know, ring all these alarm bells with the government because it does not have a detachable magazine. So it doesn't fit into a lot of those criterias uh, with... Uh, uh, assault weapon uh, bans and assault weapon regulations and registrations and all kinds of things because um, it's just simply if you go through the flow chart of is it semi-automatic yes and then does it have a detachable magazine yes then you move into all that other criteria that's making uh, you know the problems with these assault rifle issues um, but if you answer those first two questions if it's uh, is it semi-automatic no right out the door with that, you know what I mean? And then, it, and then it's like anything goes. You could, you, could, you could enjoy these mill strips a little bit more when you could enjoy them for their originality and the things that they had, even if the government does somehow denote these, uh, these um, basically aesthetic uh, things as uh, dangerous things for, uh, for, for guns. Somehow they, uh, somehow they attribute aesthetics to uh, whether, how, how dangerous a gun is, you know, whether it has a pistol grip or a, 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 or a muzzle a, a, a muzzle brake. Look, I know you've uh, dealt with all this uh, to the point of just being nauseous, so I'm not going to get into it here, but basically, um, these are cool because they don't fall into that group um, just because of the fact that they do not have a detachable magazine. And, uh, you know, for me, I'd hardly notice it. I'm used to stripper clips. Uh, you know, somebody that's used to their AK and, and uh, you know, slapping 30-round magazines in there would be a little bit slowed down by this thing or feel that they were uh, moving into something that was more antiquated. But for me, this is like moving up to high-tech, having a 10-round stripper clip and, uh, and it firing semi-automatically. You mean I don't have to cycle it for each round? I don't have to cycle a bolt for each round? For me, this is like moving up into the, uh, you know, I feel like the soldier that had his 1903 Springfield taken away and was handed a grand and he was like, Where's the bolt? What do, how do I... Wow, it just does it by itself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, and, you know, the integrated bayonet, uh, you know, the Russians always knew how to do these right, man. You know, it's uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I don't understand this cleaning rod, actually. Uh, you know, and I don't know if it's just this one or... It supposedly it has threads on it, but supposedly you don't screw it in. It just sits right here in this channel. But yet, with the... Bay with the cleaning rod in there, the bayonet seems to get a little uh, hung up. Like right now, I just opened it, and I could just tell by the way it opened that it kind of got jammed up against the cleaning rod, and it's like stuck in there. Then you have to really, really, uh, you know, work it with your hand to get it loose, whereas uh, with, if the cleaning rod isn't in there, um, the bayonet seems to function uh, properly. It snaps open. And, and, and hooks right in there immediately, and to get it, it's, it's not stuck. It just uh, clicks right back into place. Um, so you make very easy. And with the uh, with this cleaning rod in there, uh, it's it's this head of it seems to be maybe a little bit too large. Um, the guy, it did not come with a cleaning rod. Uh, perhaps I bought the wrong one, or perhaps that just needs to have a little bit shaved off the top. But it is blued. It, it would then it would be shiny. Who knows? I think maybe the best thing to do is just leave it the way it is without the cleaning rod. It's like for uh, for one of these, it's very bare bones. All of this stuff was taken off. The muzzle brake and the uh, and the um, grenade launching sight all removed from here. So it, it makes it lighter uh, than it normally would be. And uh, uh, I, I'm going to take it to the range and I'll, uh, I, I, maybe I'll put up another video after uh, firing it as like a range report or maybe try to do something at the range, um, a video at the range to... Uh, 
talk about it a little bit. But uh, so far, so good. Um, it's a shame that they're all sold out because at this point, I I would recommend uh, you know getting one just because if you just want to have a shooter, you know what I mean. If you have want to have one that you know you'll pass on to your kids and uh, how somehow people are talking about them like the collectability, like that one day these things will be worth a million dollars. But um, you know what? Uh, if you just want a nice shooter, you want to own an SKS, and uh, you know you don't want to break the bank because uh, these things used to be dead cheap, but not anymore. But uh, you know, 300 and change is uh, that's it's not really all right. It's a uh, you're paying a premium than what you used to pay 15 years ago. But I mean, but it's not insane. I mean, you know, I'd I'd see a couple of SKSs. I'd walk into one gun store and I'd you know the, the one that I'm unfamiliar with and be like, look, this guy's got seven SKSs here. Look, two Chinese ones. Uh, three Yugo ones and a couple of Russians. You know, he's got so many of them, he's got to be offering a good price here. You know what I mean? He's, he's got a bunch of them. Uh, no. I was, I'd ask, I'd be like, how much is that? How much is that? Yeah, all right. Go uh, smoke another one back there, buddy. You know, because it is out of control. Out of control, you know. So, uh, I finally felt like I got an SKS where I didn't get, uh, you know, ripped. So, uh, thanks, Wideners. Um, as far as uh, misrepresenting them, look, you know, business is business. They're not, uh, they're not lying to you. They're telling you exactly what it is, and uh, you know, it'll be up to you to figure out exactly what it is that you, exactly what it is that you're getting in relation to the others. And uh, you know, the, the, the chat boards did help. Uh, they all tore it apart, but um, it's uh, they had said they were like like new, unissued, um, like unissued, kind of you know, like that word like was thrown in there. But uh, yeah, the parts. I mean, when I took it apart, the gas piston and uh, and tube and, and all the parts they, they did look brand new it was very 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 clean you know you're definitely not buying one that's got a lot of wear on it and that you got to worry about you know the bolt was nice uh um it was uh, everything looked fresh in there and after a, after a complete cleaning wasn't all loaded with cosmoline like you get these either it was just kind of loaded with uh with oil it looked like it was like heavily coated with oil uh, apparently these were referred maybe five years ago something like that four or five years ago so uh, it looked like they just uh, put a light coating of oil, and they were only very, very small um, areas where there was some cosmoline. But uh, after a complete cleaning and, uh, you know, gun scrubbing everything out, blowing it out with compressed air, lightly oiling what needed to be lightly oiled, greasing a couple of parts that were important to grease, uh, excuse me, it, um, it, it really, really feels much better, and the trigger feels much better. So, uh, so that's that. The Wideners uh, Hybrid Weird SKS. Um, enjoy.